This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated M for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Sit back and relax. It's time to take a wild trip to the past. Get ready for another exciting episode of Memory Lane. Here we are on today's special episode of Memory Lane, we're looking at another Nintendo Power Magazine. And this Nintendo Power Magazine is dated back all the way from November 2006. Yeah, let's see if we can make sure that it's not too bright. I'm pretty excited about this Nintendo Power Magazine. Uh, this Nintendo Power Magazine came from a uh, JNC uh, Fix and Plays. My friend Joe, uh, he let me borrow this magazine, and you can see right here that it is another Pokemon uh, Nintendo Power. He's been collecting Nintendo Powers that feature Pokemon, heavily feature Pokemon. And you can see right here that this one right here has uh, quite a bit of Pokemon on the front cover. You have Pikachu and quite a few other Pokemons right there. Uh, the one thing that I'm really, really really interesting it's up here on top the official we launch news i'm very very curious to see what kind of Wii news we get i remember back when the uh before the Wii first launched it was a lot of hype it was a huge deal so uh, let's see what this magazine has to offer i actually stood in line for 12 hours to get a Wii console at launch all right and right away, as soon as you open up the magazine, you get a uh, Nintendo DS Square Enix game right here. Rocket Slime Dra Dragon Quest Heroes. And I love the uh, little DS illustration right there. Let's zoom in on that DS right there. Let's see if we can do that. Alright, there we go. Let me zoom in. Look at that classic DS uh, console handheld. And look at these creatures. Look at that. What are, what are these things? They look like they actually belong in the Pokemon universe. Which is ironic because this is a Pokemon Nintendo Power. Let's uh, zoom in here. And then on the next page we have... Justice League Heroes for the uh, Game Boy Advance and the DS. And you have the whole table of contents right here. This was around the time where GameCube pretty much was towards the end of its run. Yeah, it looks like we have a uh, Nintendo Power content table of contents also still right here. Looks like we have some Sonic the Hedgehog action going on right here. And it looks like we have the PAX um, Expo right here. A little image of that. Which you'll probably be seeing that on page 96. And we have the Wii. What is this here? The Trauma Center Second Opinion. So this is the Trauma Center ad right there for the, uh, the Wii system. And we have the Game Index, alright. So it gives you like a whole rundown on what page each game is on, and it's a whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff, look at this. So not only do you have the table of content, but you have the Game Index, you can skip ahead and go to a certain page. And it looks like we have a little RPG called Contact. Looks like we have like a little interview or something right, right here. Yeah, what is this? There's a new 12 year old genius in town and she's not blah blah blah. What is this? A, is this a book? Advertising books instead of a Nintendo Power. Alright. We got the uh... Like another little... Look at this Mario. Down here in the bottom. Look at this. 
It's a weird looking Mario. This is, must be this tall to get sick on this ride. What? And this is a creepy picture over here. I don't really know what this is about. Um, what what does this say up here? It says if you let other people piece by piece what make you into what you want, even if it's stupid, what happens to you? It's like one of those drug things or something like what is this? Above the influence.com, I guess it's probably bizarre. It's such a weird thing. Alright, wait, 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 what do we got here? Wait, we got the uh, most wanted games. The uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is the most wanted GameCube game. Uh, pa Super Paper Mario. Batman Kato's Origin, Splinter Cell, Lego Star Wars 2, and we got the Game Boy Advance down here. We got Final Fantasy 6, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Final Fantasy 5, Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis Edition, on the uh, DS. The uh, most wanted game is The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. And I don't think they have a Wii section yet. It's the Wii. Just came out around this time. And this is some pretty crazy looking stuff. Uh, this is for Red Steel. Check that out. Uh, Red Steel was a huge deal when it first launched on the Wii. The first day the Wii came out. Because uh, it was like the first eye-catching first-person shooter on the Wii system. And it's like an origami add for Red Steel. That is really, really unique, interesting, pretty cool. Prepare for launch. The uh, Wii system, November 19th, 2006 for $249.99 and what do we got here for launch games? Let's look down here. This is incredible to see. This is the Ant Bully, uh, Avatar, Boys and Angels, we got the uh, Call of Duty 3 cars, got all kinds of stuff. Excite Truck, that was the first game I got on the Wii, and that game was really, I still have it, it's awesome. And look at that, Rampage, I, I, that was another one I picked up. Uh, let's see here, what else we have here? Far Cry Vengeance, I believe I actually got that one also. Uh, the Super Monkey Ball game, I believe I got that one also. And the Rayman Raven Rabbits, that's another one I picked up. That game is actually really fun. And uh, here we go, we got some stock imagery of people playing the Wii system. And uh, before you know it, there's many TVs being broken. These people are throwing the uh, the Wii remote, the Wii remote, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, through the TV screens. All right, let's keep it right there. That's such a big deal. And what else do we have here? We have. Uh, that is definitely a, looks like a DS game. It almost looks like a PS1 game. It has that PS1 type of graphics. Some sort of a game right there, Star Wars. This is We Love the 80s. This is Elevator Action. That's what it looks like. We're, oh, Impossible Mission. Impossible Mission. We got some more games over here. And probably around this time, I actually subscribed to Nintendo Power because I was super hyped on uh, the, the Wii system. Uh, the biggest selling point for me was the Virtual Console. I thought that was like the greatest thing ever. And 
Hands down, the Wii had like the greatest virtual console ever because you can download Genesis games, Neo Geo game, Peace Engine, uh, Turbo Graphics games. And uh, even till this day, the Switch doesn't have that. And we have a game watch forecast. These are all various different things that you want to keep your eyes on. There's a whole bunch of lists of different games. And we have a Mega Man ZX for the DS. Right here, look at that. We have this big ass Kirby. Now that must be the uh, the Japanese Kirby because he looks like he's pretty happy and smiling. Uh, usually the American Kirby is pissed off. And we have this Billy and Mandy. It looks like a like a platformer. Made by Midway. And we have Yoshi Island 2, Island Hopper. And uh this is the Wii games are coming. The Wii games are coming on the top right here. But this is a DS game. You guys are trying to hype the the Wii system. Here we have Sonic on the uh, the DS, or actually the Game Boy Advance. And here we have a first look at the uh, the Wii games, and you can tell, like back then, I did these were some pretty good looking graphics for you know Wii standards. I mean, look at this. This is fully charged. I never played that game before. And then we have that truck game right there. It looks like a monster truck game. It actually looks pretty good for back then. We have that Tony Hawk game. I don't know too much about that one. Another nice thing about the uh, the Wii system. Here's Far Cry. And uh. <laughs> I remember buying that game. That game was uh, not so good. It was okay, but it was a. To be honest, it was a piece of crap of a game. It wasn't that good at all. And what else do we have here? We have the Avatar game, the Rayman, Raven Rabbits. That game was probably one of the best launch games on the Wii. It was definitely fun to play the mini games on that. The cow tossing and all kinds of crazy stuff. Now we have. Uh, the Sims on the... Oh, we have a GameCube game. Alright. Sims 2 Pets for the GameCube. And uh, we got Barnyard for the uh, Wii system right there. And we have Bomber. Bomberman Land Touch for the uh, DS. Yeah, it looks like we have some more DS games right here with Justice League Heroes. And uh, Justice League Heroes The Flash for Game Boy Advance. Charlotte's Web. Remember that cartoon movie? Uh, that's coming out for the Game Boy Advance in 2006. It looks interesting. We have Gothic Gumshoe right here, coming out on the DS as well. Never heard of that. It looks uh, like an RPG type deal. Linear thinking for the DS. And what, what is this? Tales from the Crypt. Tomb Raider Legend for the uh, DS and Game Boy Advance. It looks like a pretty interesting uh, Tomb Raider game coming out on the DS in fall of 2006. We're going back like 15 years ago. Unravel the Mystery. And we have a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon little preview thing going on right here. And here we go! We got the Pokemon stuff. Look at that. Look at all these uh, the Pokemon stuff going on here. Look at this. Wonder if they're gonna have any maps. Alright, they basically tell you how to do all the different things in this game. Let's give you a little small strategy guide. They tell you all about the uh, the food items, the seas, the orbs. 
and then we have a nice large uh, centerfold, if that's what you want to call it, a nice big picture of Lara Croft. Tomb Raider Legend for the uh, GameCube, DS, and Game Boy Advance. And here we have, uh, looks like Madden. It says Touch Football. This is Madden 07. I'm guessing this is for the Wii. Yeah, so this is the Wii version down here. And I guess, you know, that the graphics were uh, much improved compared to, let's see if there was a GameCube version. I would assume that there probably was. And they're going through the whole details on uh, Madden 07 on the Wii. Kicking combined mini game, and here we have some nice graphics. It actually looks pretty good. And here we have uh, looks like the um, Super Monkey Ball game. That game was actually really, really good. And what do we have here? We have a poster. It's, it's on. It's definitely on the wrong side, though. I think. So usually the poster's on that side. Does this open up this way? Nope. I guess it opens up this way. It's a Super Monkey Ball poster. Let's uh, take a look at the Super Monkey Ball poster right here. That looks pretty awesome. I think I probably had that back in the day. I used to, I used to hang my posters up. Alright, let's... Uh, Uh, let's see if I can get this back in here. We have a preview of Super Monkey Ball. And it's telling you how to play the game right there. Let's look at, look at these illustrations. We have the lady right there basically doing the uh, the Wii remote motions and it's telling you how to, how to play the game. And this is like a brand new thing. So back then, you know, this is really really hyped up like no one has ever played motion controlled gaming before mainstream like this was something new and it was a big deal okay right, let's uh, lock this up here try to stop this from moving around and we have more crazy motion control I'm going to try to get this page turned without bending anything here. Let's see if we can do it. And that little illustration of that guy up there, that's hilarious. Let's see if we can uh, show this guy right here. I'm trying to turn this page without bending this. Uh... Okay, we, we can do it. Let me just take it over here for a second. All right, I think we did it. All right, that's good enough. And what we'll do is we'll move this over here a little bit here. There he is right there, look at that guy. He's having a ton, a ton of fun playing Super Monkey Ball, look at that. That's a, not a fake smile right there, that's actually genuine enjoyment. All right, we got some more crazy superhero stuff right here. All right, let's see if we can uh, turn the page and see what we get. I think we're about halfway through. Usually the uh, poster is the halfway point, the checkpoint. All right, so here we have uh, more superhero stuff right here, and then we have um, Battle, what was it, Battle B Damon for the Game Boy Advance, a little advertisement. You know what, what was missing in this Nintendo Power was the uh, the fan drawings, the illustrations. Uh, it was not in the beginning of the book. It's kind of weird.
We got a role playing party. And you got the uh, Game Boy. I uh, actually did Nintendo DS. That is a pretty cool illustration. I'm gonna zoom in on that. He's playing in the uh, DS and all these uh, mystical looking, crazy looking things are just watching him. It's like you got Vikings and dwarves and all kinds of weird shit. It's like a Dungeons and Dragons type thing going on there. What did the uh, the DS and let's see what we have here. They're listing the different RPG games. Uh, Children of Mana, Final Fantasy three. I guess they're kind of graphing like what the game's like with the statistics on it. So you have like uh, what's this? Final Fantasy V, Summon, Summon Knights, uh, Sword of Craft Story Two. And how do you even say that word? What kind of word is that? Look at this. Try to say that word. Let's, let's zoom out here for a second. L G no Y G G D R A. How do you pronounce that? Don't even bother asking me to pronounce that. I, that is a crazy word, man. All right, we got Super Monkey Ball Adventure for the uh, GameCube. And it's for the PS2 also. We've got new Super Mario Brothers. Over the over the hedge. Looks like we got some cheat codes or something here. I lock all moves, yeah. Cheat codes. Uh during this time cheat codes were kinda scarce. Like you don't find them too often. It's actually nice to see some cheat codes. Alright, we got some more uh, Nintendo DS imagery right here. And uh, it looks like they have the uh, the pink DS for uh, female gamers. As you can see right there. Let's zoom in on that. So Nintendo is trying to target female gamers as well. And here we got the pink DS. And down here we have the uh, the standard looking DS, the black one. And it looks like we have our subscription card right here for the uh, Nintendo Nintendo Power. And there is the uh, the nice looking pink DS right there. Let's look at that. We got the pink DS. So definitely targeting female gamers back then is definitely a quite a nice looking DS. All right, let's uh, we got the Harvest Moon game. We got the Freedom Wings. I mean, look at that. That looks pretty cool. Definitely looks like a like a PS1 type game. You see me on these graphics right here. Definitely has like a PS1 look to it. And now over here you have Harvest Moon. And Harvest Moon is a uh, pretty nice farming simulator. Okay, let's get this uh, zoomed in like right there. This art of the deal. It's like Bat uh, and Kato's origins. Got some Bat and Kato stuff right here. All right, let's uh, get this page turned. And there's a ton of recipes for Bat and Kato's. 
So yeah, but once again, the Nintendo Power comes into play, you can actually uh, use it like for like a mini strategy guide, Give, gets little hints, helps you out. You have Summon Knight 2. And we have a uh, Zelda stuff right here. So it's uh, Aquarine at Time, The Legend of Zelda, the first one right here. Link's Awakening DX, The Wind Waker, and then we have Four Sword. So they're showing all kinds of Zelda stuff here. Pretty cool. And what do we have on the next page? Top 5 Dungeons in uh, Zelda. So they have all kinds of stuff here that you guys can check out. This is Touch Detective for the uh, DS. And then we have a Star Fox game for the DS right here. That looks pretty cool. And then we have more Star Fox stuff and it's basically telling you, I mean, this, this I find to be interesting. So let's give you like an idea of how to do certain barrel rolls and all kinds of stuff using the pen on the, uh, the DS, which is pretty interesting. And we have a Mario sports game right here. What is this? It looks like a uh, Mario Hoops 3 on 3 for the DS. Alright, so now we have a DuckTales game for the, uh, definitely the NES version. And eventually they remade that game. It's pretty interesting, look at that. It came out in 1989 and they're doing like a little playback type deal on this as uh, for the NES. This is a, uh, it was covered in issue 7 and 8. So this game was in issue 7 and 8. And this is definitely like issue like a hundred and something probably. It's way past a hundred. And then we have a, uh, as you can see here, a Pokemon, oh my God. Got saved. A Pokemon comic. And it's upside down, so you have to turn it the other way around to actually see it, but it's a whole Pokemon comic comic book right there and yeah, let me just make sure I have that centered and we have a Lego Star Wars illustration right there and it looks like we have some more cat and Bat and Kato's origin stuff. So far, I think that's like the second or third time I've seen Bat and Kato's inside this magazine in different spots. And what do we have here? We have um, Mecha Salt Phantom Wars for the uh, DS. Now that looks pretty cool. See, I like mech games. Let's zoom in on that for a second. Check that out. It's like a mech warrior type deal. And then we have uh, Mario Hoops again for the second time. And this magazine almost took a spill on the on the floor, which I don't want to happen. It's, just, it's actually not my magazine. I'm borrowing this magazine from JNC Quick and Plays. So you have to go check out his YouTube channel because he does all kinds of crazy stuff on his channel with old school gaming consoles and no, all kinds of stuff. We have uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Blue Rescue Team, and Red Rescue Team. Clubhouse Games. What's this? Uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2. That was actually a 
pretty fun game on the uh, the original Game Boy, like the Mario and Donkey Kong game. Capcom Classics Mini Mix and Crash Boom Bang and Stay on Target. Uh, these are all looks like DS games and looks pretty cool. There's so many DS games. There are so many DS games, it's crazy. Like, really, really crazy. Alright, let's turn the page right here. We have Cooking Mama. For the, what's it, Nintendo DS? Lego Star Wars 2. And The Legend of Spyro. And check out this uh, right here. It looks like we have the Ocarina advertisement again. It was a different one inside the last issue. Yeah, look at that. You can get yourself one of those. A sweet potato ocarina. Or you can get one of those ones right there. Uh, different prices. So they range like all the way up to like $49.99. And I guess they start off at like $25, I guess. Maybe? Let's see if I can see if we can see that. And that's what it looks like. It's like you walk around outside and play the ocarina. They look really crazy, but why not? Have any of you owned a ocarina before? Comment down below and let me know. All right, we have, uh, looks like, more DS games and a, a GameCube game open season. All right, what do we have here? We have uh, Alex Ryder Operation Stormbreaker. What is this, a movie? And the theater is nationwide? Yeah, it is a movie. It's probably not that good of a movie. All right, we have uh, a whole list of different things to eat. Autumn All-Stars. So these are like different games and the uh, the ratings that they get for various different systems and of course the uh, the Wii. I don't think the Wii's on here yet. It's the Wii's brand new, just coming out. And it looks like we have uh, looks like a rock band down here. Hawthorne's Heights. And now we have, look at this. Let's look at what we got here. This is weird. We have a Virtual Boy. A Virtual Boy spot in a Nintendo magazine from 2006. We have to get closer and see that. What is going on here? What the hell? Looks like this guy has a complete Virtual Boy collection. He's the biggest Virtual Boy fanboy ever. Look at that. He has everything. What is this? Looks like a really cool illustration of Zelda. Or Lynx. And then we have Pikachu flying around New York City. And we got all the people right there in New York City. You'll never see that again. Tons and tons of people. The good old days, you can walk around and actually be able to breathe. Look at that. And here we got Pikachu flying above you. And we got this guy over here. This sort of hell of a look at this guy. He's playing the Wii. Now that guy, unlike the other guy I showed, this guy looks like he's faking it. He looks like he's kind of putting on a fake face right there. Look at that. Come on. You're not too convincing, guy. The other guy was, uh... Yeah, well, it looked pretty good. I don't know if he was faking or not, but... He looked a lot more genuine. He looked like he was having a lot of fun. Alright, let's turn the page and let's see what we get here. Yeah, look at this. this. Oh, this is PAX. Okay. This is PAX. 
Uh, which, uh, which, uh, where is this PAX located? I wonder. So I know PAX on the East Coast was pretty new at the time. I'm not sure if this was the first PAX on the East Coast or not. But again, look at all those people having fun. A lot of people. That's insane. Yeah, look at that. Look at the whole Nintendo DS setup right there. People having fun. Yeah, it looks like a musical uh, attraction right there at PAX. And we got some beanbag chairs with some DS action going on here. And we got all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know exactly what that is, but here we have another DS. We have more Mario stuff for Nintendo related tattoos. Some pretty crazy Nintendo fans right here. Look at this. Ouch. Alright, let's uh, see if we can get this centered. We're almost towards the end. This has been a pretty cool. Nintendo Power Magazine, especially the PAX stuff right here. This is pretty cool. I like this stuff. And here we have, uh, let's see what we got here. We got cave paintings. So they, we actually have a hand-drawn thing over here. What is this? This is July's hand-drawn art of the month. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon drawing, and then we have another one up here. The uh, Insider Review of the Month, Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, it looks like we have some uh, Animal Crossing action going on here. And I don't know what that is, but that is pretty creepy. Let's, uh, let's move on. Is that so? Uh, I don't know what that was, but... Whoa, what is that thing? What is that? What the hell is this? Alright, moving, moving right along. Let's uh, get away from that page. That page has a lot of weird stuff on it. It's time to move away from that. And we have another Lara Croft imagery right there. And there's nothing but Lara Croft there, but enjoy looking at Lara Croft. And we have the GameCube controller right here. And I don't know what game this is. But that is a GameCube controller. And on next month's issue, we have uh, the countdown to launch. Dynamite, we've got to beat. And let's just read the signs. Okay, so I don't know exactly what all that stuff is. And here we have the uh, gaming on the go. Want to find the hottest spots for gaming in town? We've got you covered. So if you go to NintendoWiFi.com, you can find like a different, like different locations where you can connect your DS to the internet. Pretty interesting. And here we have Nintendo Power advertisements and a lady playing the DS. There's a lot of uh, heavily based uh, ads on women playing the DS or imagery. So you can tell during this time, Nintendo is definitely trying to target not only males, but females. As you can see there. And we have another one up on top. And Nintendo knew exactly what they were doing by targeting female gamers. As the uh, DS became one of the top selling handhelds of all time, if not, probably is the top selling. 
And we have a good old fashioned GameCube right there. Let's uh, zoom in on that. This, this is towards the end of the GameCube's lifespan. Around the towards the when this magazine came out. This is two thousand the end of two thousand six. So let's go out with a bang. We got the GameCube right there. Got some guy playing GameCube, enjoying the GameCube. And this is right before the Wii launches. So it's a history in the making, the end of an era. Alright, let's uh Lock this in right here. And we are towards the end of the magazine. It's a great way of ending the magazine. GameCube, right at the end. The end of an era. Towards the beginning of a new era, the Wii. And we have Ant Bully on the back right here. And I don't know too much about that game, but hey, got Ant Bully. And let's take a look at that cover one more time. We have. Several Pokemons right there. Nintendo Power, let's talk, get, got questions about Pokemon Mystery Dungeons, we've got the answers. So there we go. If you guys enjoyed that episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. And let me know what you think.